Uh, what an amazing act to follow and not be more appropriate. I um, just wanted to thank the culture for the invitation and everyone else for being here. It's really a, a great pleasure. Um, so I'm just going to get right into it. So my piece is called Ideas Matter, Zizek Singh's Pussy Riot. Uh, on the morning of February 21st, 2012, a group of five women entered central Moscow's Cathedral of Christ the Savior to execute an event unparalleled in recent Russian history. For many Russians, including those sympathetic to the opposition movement, the, <coughs> the Moscow Cathedral has served as a clear symbol of the revived collusion between state power and Russian orthodoxy, recently brought to a head in former KGB officer Patriarch Kirill's televised lauding of President Putin among massive protest and public discontent. Wearing brightly colored neon tights and dresses and donning balaclava ski masks with slits to reveal their eyes and mouths, the masked women hastily made their way to the altar, weaving past security guards and a horde of camera persons. One of the women grabbed a guitar as they approached the Soleas. Distributed across the head of the church, they began to bow and throw uh, punches and launch air kicks while shouting to an unamplified guitar riff. Gay pride sent to Siberia in chains, one of them chanted. Quote, the head of the KGB, their chief of saint. Within less than a minute, the very repressive apparatus the group had targeted with their action would begin to materialize as they were arrested from the altar and dragged off the premises uh, by security. It was not, however, until the group known as Pussy Riot posted a video of the event online that they were arrested en masse and charged with, quote, hooliganism as part of an organized group. And in adding to that, the, quote, aim of inciting religious hatred, the group, two of whom were young mothers, faced up to seven years in prison. Although the sentence was reduced to two years for two of the members, the third was released earlier, the strident consequence had, according to Anya Bernstein, paradoxically revealed, quote, the brutality and impotence of the Russian state. Pussy Riot had clearly struck a nerve. Their intervention, titled Punk Prayer, Virgin Mary Put Putin Away, posed a direct threat to contemporary post-Soviet political order under which Kremlin policy is sutured to the paralyzing influence of the Orthodox Church. Against Russians' return to traditional values, uh, a condition only exacerbating the country's historically uh, oppressive policies on gay rights and women, Pussy Riot leveraged the musical forms and political meanings of Russian Orthodoxy through their feminist inflected art action. But while it refers to traditional religious music, Pussy Riot operates according to a different logic. During the trial that followed Pussy Riot's intervention, an insightful characterization of the event would emerge in the laconic court testimony from none other than the cathedral cleaning lady. The women were dancing, she insisted, to music that was, quote, neither classical nor orthodox. <laughs> in what follows, I want to try to elaborate just what kind of music, indeed if neither classical nor orthodox, Pussy Riot were responsible for producing. Moreover, I aim to illustrate how their work configures such a musical practice as a site for a kind of spectral material violence fomented through the pure virtuality of the proposition or threat. This actually existing virtual matter, I suggest, implicates recent elaborations of non-reductive philosophical materialism as much as it connects with the legacy of conceptual art. One response to Pussy Riot's intervention that did not address its status as music though which I maintain was no less profound, came from contemporary Slovenian philosopher and cultural theorist Slavoj Žižek. Their message is, ideas matter, the philosopher contended in a 2012 statement entitled The True Blasphemy, pithily hailing the group as, quote, conceptual artists in the noblest sense of the word. Žižek went on to nominate Pussy Riot as, quote, artists who embody an idea. In this paper, Zizek's own materialist philosophical project provides a connective tissue between music, ideas, matter, and ultimately, violence. Threaded through these nodes is the figure of the threat. As a kind of violence avant la lettre, the, the threat constrains and encloses the coordinates of the possible. It forestalls, apprehends, it incarcerates. 
Through a more than material virtual force, nevertheless concretely present, the threat produces veritable effects in the real. It is an idea made material. My argument turns on the notion that the threat and conceptual art share a specifically propositional nature. Conceptual art's proposal for a yet to be physicalized object or event on the one hand, and the authorial denial of futurity and the constricting, contrast, contracting, or even extinguishing of life on the other. As a rejoinder to Althusser's materialist philosophy, Zizek in his new book, uh, Absolute Recoil Towards a New Foundation of Dialectical Materialism, claims that authority works strictly as threat, that it is propositional. Were it enacted, like the impotent father or the Russian state, as Bernstein suggested, it would cease to be genuine authority. As with the conceptual proposition, the threat is, uh, figures as matter virtualized. Importantly, the presence of this spectral substance appears in Zizek's argument as a kind of weird ideal materiality, which Althusser apparently misses, but Lacan grasps as the, quote, ma specific materiality of ideas themselves. Referring further to Marx, Engels, the German ideology, and Althusser's ideological state apparatuses, Zizek, Zizek insists that a radical materialism must maintain not only that, quote, ideas are grounded in the material, social, and productive processes, and insists not only upon the material ideological apparatuses that sustain ideology, but also the imminent materiality of the ideal order itself, end of quote. Beyond, the, beyond mere material support for the production of ideality, ideas themselves exert a physicalized force in the world. It is then through this kind of strange idea substance, something of a short circuit between the ideal and material domains, that we arrive at a reformulation of Zizek's Pussy Riot slogan, namely, ideas are, in this register, matter. In a different register, I want to problematize recent art theoretical uh, positions that seek a return to matter in the form of raw materials, the stuff of objects, sounds, etc., through the simplistic adoption of new materialist philosophies, while conceptualism becomes all too easily acquainted with philosophical idealism. No less importantly, I want to exhibit a musical practice, a practice altogether conceptual, while politically efficacious and tethered to materialist thought, a tall order I know. I begin, therefore, with two points of departure for a conceptual art informed by critical music practices. The first, ideas matter, <laughs> refers to Zizek's characterization of punk, of punk prayer, because he writes, infamously quashed Moscow Cathedral intervention, while the second, Baldessari, uh, Zizek sings uh, uh, Pussy Riot, plays on the title of John Baldessari's 1972 video, Baldessari Sings Lewitt, a work in which the artist sings Solowitz's uh, well-known sentences on conceptual art. Um, so I'm going to skip a little bit about Zizek um, very clearly sort of um, connects the balaclavas to conceptualism. Um, he says these masks of de-individualization um, uh, say, or, or mean they're not individuals, they're an idea. Um, there's a little bit more around that. Um, both Baldessari Sings Lewitt and, and Punk Prayer consist of texts set to musical performances, a feature I want to bring into contact with a notion, uh, with a notion of music undergirded by uh, uh, conceptualism and, langu and language more generally. Playfully redoubling the hermeticism of Lewitt's foundational conceptual statements through its homo-socialized song cycle, Baldessari Sings Lewitt itself stands, an em stands as an emblem of this conceptualist era. Already in this early moment of conceptual art, Baldessari Sings Lewitt provided a subtle critique of the burgeoning movement by provisionally rooting Lewitt's propositionality, both historically and formally in the practice of the musical art song. Baldessari Sings Lewitt was thus historically and formally uh, uh, with, with thus, with thus simultaneously a kind of musical realization and text setting of Lewitt's uh, sentences on conceptual art. Quote, ideas can be works of art, to quote sentence 10. All ideas need not be made physical, end of quote. And as Volker Strabel, <coughs> um, um, who's a musicologist uh, in Berlin, among others, have pointed out, this relationship is mirrored in the very structure of the musical score. Ideas in the form of a text or notation, 
uh, need not be made physical or performed. In any case, while generally under-recognized as such, Baldessari's work has begun to receive significant consideration as music, uh, such as th this show that was created recently around his music work. As for Pussy Riot, if we follow uh, Zizek, the conceptualist idea forms no less than the very core of their work. But what might an event like punk prayer mean as music, despite its adoption of the song form and its incorporation of language as lyrical content, Punk Prayer has yet to receive significant attention for its musical relevance. Indeed, with its direct references to anti-LGBT violence, feminism, and state oppression linked to Russian orthodoxy, Punk Prayer notably parodies the form of religious musical text setting and thus inv invokes the era of pre-modern liturgical mu music. In addition to this anachronistic deployment of church music, uh, Pussy Riot also invoked the aesthetics of Riot Girl Punk, two genres commonly thought to fall outside of the purview of modernist art music proper. Pussy Riot's work therefore points backwards to a moment prior to the conception of music as divorced from language, while it heralds an overcoming of this very separation. Importantly, absolute music, the equation of music with autonom autonomous instrumental sound, is to be understood as a historically specific concept. As Carl Dahlhaus noted in his well-known text, The Idea of Absolute Music, the pre-modern notion of music as harmonia, rhythmos, and logos gave way in the 19th century to pure instrumental music as the dominant paradigm. Logos, as extended to language and conceptualism, I want to argue, may then receive a new valence in the critical music practices of artists like Pussy Riot. If neither orthodox, if neither orthodox nor classical, as per the cathedral cleaning lady's comment, then uh, perhaps Pussy Riot's music is uh, indeed conceptual. But just what con constitutes this conceptualism qua Zizek aggrandizement, and through what mechanisms do Pussy Riot mobilize it, render it efficacious? I want to argue uh, Pussy Riot launch an invective challenge to contemporary Russian state order by disrupting historically entrenched theological ties in a violence orchestrated through the formal historical specificity of musical practice with its focus on Russian Orthodox text setting as both an object and critique, uh, uh, an object of critique and mode of expression, punk prayer disturbs ideological and religious norms through performance in the medium of the voice. Relevantly, in his study of, of Orthodox Christian singing, um, the practices uh, uh, in uh, Estonia during the knots, ethnomusicologist Jeffers Engelhart develops the notion of right singing, a term he borrows from religious music studies and sonic theology scholarship. Quote, right sounds, according to uh, Engelhart, happen at the right time, in the right place, in the right company. Guilty, if anything, of playing the wrong sounds at the wrong time in the wrong company. Pussy Riot upend rightness with their heretical mobilization of a theological conceptualist logos. Indeed, if, if musical and theological rightness is governed by a strict set of normative social laws, then Pussy Riot represent a variable, a variable, veritable, crack in the hegemonic order. Um, one recalls here Mary Douglas's concept of dirt or deviance as matter out of place, replete with similar implications of the sacred and the transgressive. Apropos Zizek's reading, Pussy Riot render a, a, a post-absolute conceptualism through ideas that matter. And given it this potency, Prunk Prayer is perhaps wrong singing at its best. Right or wrong, though, <laughs> One can sing not only musically, but uh, rhetorically. And that Zizek is found singing the praises of Pussy Riot is perhaps un unsurprising, considering the philosopher's extended guardian published letters with Pussy Riot's Nadia Tola Konikova during her, prison during her prison sentence in the remote Mordovia, instigated by philosopher uh, Michel Eltkaninov, -Elt the Zizek Tolokonikova prison letters uh, correspondence, along with Zizek's above cited the true blasphemy statement, um, was published as Comradely Greetings earlier this summer on Verso. Um, in, an, in another interesting note, in addition to these uh, formal uh, prison missives, Zizek's 2008 book, Violence, was apparently the sole bit of reading material um, that she was able to smuggle past prison censors. Um, so I want to sort of move towards the end 
here um, and just sort of jump to a, a bit of my argument with respect to Zizek. Um, it's, in, in a way, I'm going to have to condense a lot of it and wrap it up a little bit, um, I should say, violently somehow. Um, relatedly, violence as the imminent virtuality of the threat is a theme that can be seen to animate Zizek's entire oeuvre. Um, and perhaps nowhere is it so spectacularly demonstrated than in the aforementioned chapter of Zizek's Absolute Recoil. In it, Zizek derides Althusser for maintaining that the state apparatus and its violent enforcement must always uh, retain a connection to a little, quote, piece of the real, um, here in the form of military tanks, riot police, etc. We might add to that Magdalena's um, similar uh, police crackdown and um, Beck. Uh, Althusser insists, however, that these apparatuses need not actually need not be actually deployed, that they can function via implication through sheer threat. Yet this for Zizek is precisely where Althusser remains a quote, <coughs> vulgar materialist. For even though Althusser asserts that the state need not actually deploy military might for it to be effective, Zizek insists somewhat counterintuitively that it is in fact uh, it is only through the withholding of force that state violence actually works. Otherwise, excessive brutality is received as marking a kind of impotence. Interestingly, Zizek's critique of Althusser and the related anecdote comprise one of the few sections of Zizek's chapter not taken directly from the prison letter correspondence with Pussy Riot's Tolokonikova. Ideas are perhaps, before anything else, copies of other ideas. And although this copy and paste approach is not unfamiliar to Zizek, <laughs> especially considering his recent white supremacist magazine plagiarism scandal, speaking of potentially dodgy, dodgy appropriations of rightist propaganda, it's interesting to note that Zizek's ideas matter was a phrase first uttered by Ayn Rand. <laughs> it is perhaps revealing that the philosopher omitted this material in his correspondence with Tola Konikova, but then again it's hard to tell a new mother pushed to the brink of a hunger strike in a former gulag facility that quote, the true authority has to remain virtual. That's taken from the talk that Zizek gave that was included, uh, material of which was included into the new book. Um, not that Zizek is wrong in claiming that authority works as pure threat and that material violence, in a sense, renders authority impotent. But is it not evident uh, that more often than not, um, state power simply retains its hegemonic position despite its being utterly impotent? Considering Pussy Riot sentencing, uh, or for example, the U.S., the violent U.S. suppression of the Occupy movement in 2012, or um, now given Magdalena's presentation of the Quebec student strike, uh, are we not living in as Althusserian times as ever? <laughs> For not only does authorial violence continue to seemingly <laughs> unperturbed, <laughs> but the state <laughs> apparatus <laughs> <laughs> remains <laughs> all the more effective despite. <laughs> okay, and then finally, <laughs> the last sentence is, if I can, <laughs> you can make it. Uh, despite this kind of impotent acting out through brute force, okay, that's it. <laughs> swap me. <laughs>